Ten biggest lies your school told you. Number ten. Christopher Columbus discovered that the Earth was round. You know the rhyme. Christopher Columbus sailed the blue in 1492. While the Italian adventurer was set on completing a treacherous journey to sail to East Asia, many people speculated that he would fail, thinking the Earth was a flat-shaped disk and the direction he would be sailing would cause him to fall off the edge. But even though Columbus failed to reach his destination, he came back and people truly believed the Earth was round. However, theories about the shape of the Earth dates about 2,000 years. Before Spain's existence, when it was first proposed by ancient Greek philosopher Pythagoras around 500 BC, he reasoned if the moon was circular, then the Earth must have been round as well. After that, another Greek philosopher named Anaxagoras revealed the true cause of solar and lunar eclipses. Then the shape of the Earth's shadow during an eclipse on the moon was used as a form of evidence that showed that the Earth was round. Number nine. America's original 13 colonies. The American flag has 13 stripes, which represent the original 13 colonies. However, technically, there were only 12 colonies that rebelled against Britain in 1775. Also, Delaware was never its own colony, but it was part of the Pennsylvania colony until June 15, 1776, when it declared itself an independent state. The British forces invaded the region in the 1660s and stole it from the Dutch. It was known as a Lower County, but Delaware did have its own separate assembly under Pennsylvania. Governorship through William Penn until the Revolutionary War. On December 7, 1787, Delaware became the first state to ratify the Constitution. Number eight, deoxygenated blood is blue. Take a good look at the inside of your wrist, and you'll see a small cluster of blue veins popping up. Contrary to popular belief, the notion that deoxygenated blood is blue is actually just a myth. They say that the blood leaving the heart is red because of the air, but in reality, you'll know that is false. The real reason why your veins look blue is all because of lighting and how your eyes perceive colors. It just so happens that when light filtrates through the layers of skin, red low frequency waves are refracted by thin fat layers and pigmentation. So this makes blue light reflect and causes you to see blue. Another factor is how much oxygen blood is carrying. At high temperatures, the oxygen level of hemoglobin decreases color changes. A third reasoning is the veins themselves. Basically, how deep beneath the skin they are, and deoxygenated hemoglobin is a darker red shade than those veins in your arteries. But this minute detail determines how amplified the light is that travels through your skin. Number seven. Why chameleons change color? While it's a well-known concept that chameleons change color to blend in with their environments, it's not always that way. Chameleons don't always. Change their colors for camouflage, but there are two other lesser-known reasons. The first reason is due to heat. If you've ever sat in a black car on a hot sunny day, then you'll know within minutes you'll find yourself sweating profusely. Light colors reflect light, while dark colors will absorb it. So chameleons will use their skin color to regulate their body temperature. If a chameleon gets cold, they will change their color to a darker color, and if in heat, vice versa. The second reason they change color is to show their mood. If a chameleon is scared, they'll darken their skin. If they are excited, they'll switch to a brighter color. While it was thought that chameleons transpose their skin colors similarly to other animals like squid and octopi through sacs filled with skin pigmentation, the ability to change their skin color comes from a delicate, coordinated system of nanocrystals that contract and expand to let certain wavelengths of light pass through. Number six. We only have five senses. We are taught that we have five primary senses, which include sight, hearing, taste, touch, and smell. This origin can be traced back to Aristotle's De Anima, which he details all our five original senses in a chapter. But the definition of sense is basically any system that has a group of sensory cell types that respond to a particular physical phenomenon. This allows signals to be received and read in the brain. The human body has anywhere from 20 to 33 senses. The less obvious senses are. In our outer and inner body, some lesser-known senses include chronoception, which is our sense of the passing of time; tension sensors, in which the brain monitors muscle tension; chemoreceptors, which detect drugs and blood-borne hormones in the brain; and magnetoreception, which allows us to detect magnetic fields. Number five: Vincent Van Gogh cut off his own ear. In art class, you've probably heard that renowned Dutch artist Vincent Van Gogh cut off his own ear and shortly mailed it to his girlfriend afterward. But the real story holds a Secret truth: A group of German historians revealed in a book that Van Gogh's spiral of madness was merely just a cover-up that came from a fellow artist and his friend Paul Gauguin. Over the course of two years, the two artists bonded while they lived in France and painted as neighbors. The two painted the town as an artistic colony, but the more than perfect friendship ended in 1888.
The traditional version of the story stems from two different parts. Van Gogh used a straight razor to cut off his ear after the two parted ways. The act was done in either self-defense or self-protecting implantation done by Gauguin after he attacked Van Gogh, when Van Gogh threw a wine glass at him. While historians are still unsure of what happened between the two, it was speculated that Van Gogh adored his friend and didn't want to lose him, so the incident was never reported to the police or in any documentation. Number 4. Pyramid Builders Were Slaves The Pyramids of Giza are a wondrous sight to behold, and it remains as one of the last seven wonders of the ancient world. Taking more than 10 years to complete, many scholars have wondered over the years as to who built it and how it was constructed. Some theories suggest it was slave labor, created by those who were forced by the great and powerful pharaohs during this time to obey him and his many wives. However, past and recent discoveries show that civil service was a major driving force behind the completion of these magnificent structures. Former director Dieter Waldung of Berlin's Egyptian Museum states it's common knowledge in Egyptology that pyramid builders were not slaves, but in fact volunteers that were loyal to the pharaohs. Taking more than 20 years to complete, it took about 10,000 men to work on the pyramids. Contrary to popular belief, these builders originated from low-income families and were well-respected that those who died during construction were given the honor of being buried in the tombs near the sacred pyramids of the ruling pharaohs. Number 3. Humans Evolved from Apes Biology class has often taught us that when it comes to evolution, humans evolved from apes. But if that were the case, then there wouldn't be any monkeys left because evolution works by wiping out the inferior species, while the primary, better adapted species thrived. But in actuality, humans chimpanzees, orangutans, gorillas, and apes all had one common ancestor that evolved in four separate directions over the course of 12 million years ago. According to National Geographic, assistant professors at the Primate Research Institute at Kyoto University discovered this theory after finding a 10 million year old jawbone. The findings published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences Journal state that orangutans separated from the lineage that led to humans about 12 million years ago, while chimps and gorillas split from our ancestors about 8 million years ago. Number 2. Abraham Lincoln and Slavery Even though Honest Abe was widely credited for freeing the slaves, Lincoln's views on slavery were complex and far from what people believed. Even though he thought slavery was morally wrong, the Founding Fathers stumbled on how to address slavery. While he thought all men should be created equal and this belief should be applied to both whites and blacks, this didn't entirely mean that he thought they should have the same political and social rights. During the fourth debate in 1858, Lincoln made his views clear after politician Stephen Douglas accused Lincoln of favoring Negro equality. Lincoln stated, I will say that I am not or ever have been in favor of bringing about in any way the political and social equality of the white and black races. He expressed that he opposed blacks serving on juries, interracial marriages, and for blacks to hold office. However, what Lincoln did believe that like all men, blacks had the right to enjoy the fruits of their labor and to improve their living conditions in society. So in this way, black men were equal to white men, and this is why he thought slavery was innately unjust. Number 1. The Truth behind Thanksgiving. From as early as elementary school, we were taught that the pilgrims arrived on the Mayflower in 1620 on Plymouth Rock, where they got ready for a harsh winter by planting corn and were given food by Native Americans. By the next fall on their first harvest, they had a feast to celebrate the hardships they overcame in the New World and shared hands and food with the Native Americans. While this story sounds hopeful and inspiring, the truth is far from it. A few years ago, before the pilgrims reached land, European settlers contracted a deadly plague that spread throughout coastal New England and killed over 80% of the population. Bodies were growing by the masses so rapidly that settlers would leave the towns rather than take the time to burn or bury the corpses, spreading the disease further. Other forms of evidence show that the pilgrims had knowledge of the plague and settled on Cape Cod because they knew the Native Americans inhabiting the area were dead, leaving behind yellow cornfields and open land. In addition, the pilgrims also stole any tools they found and left over food from any natives too weak to fight back. Historian Howard Zinn also revealed in his book, A People's History of the United States, that during the first winter the food was so scarce only 60 colonists of the 500 survived, and insufferable hunger resulted in cannibalism. One government document in the book describes several incidents where they devoured Indian flesh as a last resort, and as terrifying and horrific as it sounds, they did what they could to survive. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.